Hello science folks, we're here to talk about potential energy diagrams, a common thing you'll see in chemistry. Over here on the y-axis we've got potential energy, over on the x-axis we've got time, and we're going to be talking about what happens with reactions. And this is a reaction that you should look at and say, oh, of course I know that reaction. Many of you are saying, no, I don't. But hopefully you do. Um, what you've got going on here, this is cellular respiration, and now some of you are like, ah, the light bulb just went on, and some of you are like, I still have no idea what that means. That means you taking glucose or sugar, breathing in oxygen, and then breathing out carbon dioxide and water. This is what we do all day, every day to stay alive. All organisms perform cellular respiration to get their energy. So in this situation, we are going to start off with our reactants, and that's what we call them over here on the left side, and they contain energy. That's why we eat food. Uh, well, I eat food because I like to, but innately why I'm doing that is because it contains energy. I made a fake number over here. We're just going to try to track some heat energy, but we're going to say that that food, that sugar, and the oxygen gas contain 800 joules of energy. Now, the reason I'm eating them again is to get the energy out of them. And think about this like a sled trip. You're walking on down the hill, and you've got to walk up this little hill, and then you get a nice, sweet sledding trip down the other side to make your products. You're trying to make the carbon dioxide and water. Now, in this situation, you don't just run the risk of having sugar and oxygen gas accidentally, spontaneously combust on your kitchen counter. You've got to supply it with some energy. This is called our activation energy. This is how much energy we need to get it to turn into these new things. Now, sometimes in chemistry, we can add a catalyst. That's something that will take this little hill and make it a little lower. So we can go ahead and not have to climb all the way up that hill. But in this case, we're not dealing with catalysts. We've got to go all the way up to the top and roll down to the other side. And so when we do this, we're going to make our products. Now, our products, if we walk over to the side, we can see they have 500 joules of energy. So really, like your bank account, it stayed stable, it went up, the stock market crashed, now it's down low. We want to know what was the overall change in energy. And in this case, this is exothermic. You had 800 joules of energy at the start. Now the stuff you made only has 500 joules of energy. You've lost energy, okay? And well, who gained it? You did, you gained the energy. So we have this term called enthalpy. Enthalpy is just a fancy science word for saying what happens with heat. We write it down as a triangle H, which means change in enthalpy. I actually think about the H and enth I hear that H sound and the delta H, and I think about those H's going together. That delta H is a negative 300 joules. This is what nature prefers. Nature prefers things giving off energy. That's what we talked about before. Energy is always being released generally. Uh, we also have this concept called entropy. Entropy sounds like enthalpy, a little different. It is the mess or disorder in a system. And if we talk about this, originally you had a solid sugar and you had gas, oxygen gas, and they turned into two products, which were both gases. These are both messier. It's harder to keep track of gases. They like to float away. This is becoming more disordered or messier over time. This is also preferred. This is like your bedroom. When you talk about your bedroom, if it has high entropy and very messy, it has a positive value. This is what nature prefers. So you can just let your parents know that. Your bedroom is just following the laws of the universe. It has high entropy. It's going to be messy. Now, if your bedroom looks like this, it has low entropy. It's ordered. This is a negative value. This doesn't happen often. It's hard for the, something like this to take place. This is more common. So going back here again, this one, the delta S, the mess, the delta S is the mess, is positive. It's getting more messy over time. And it's giving off heat in it, that it is exothermic. Now moving forward, let's look at another reaction. I put this one up here and some of you are like, oh, I see what you've done. I have just taken the reaction. I've flipped it. And that means you realize that this is the reaction for, I hope you're filling in that blank because what it should be is photosynthesis. And then again, that should trigger some thoughts in your brain. Oh, yes, that's right. Plants, they take carbon dioxide, they take water, the exact opposite of what we do, and they turn it into glucose or sugar and oxygen gas. I'm so thankful they do that. That's that's a great thing. What a, what a great system. Um, this pathway that you see here, it's the exact same picture we had before, but I have flipped it. And so now we have our reactants over here. We have CO2 and water, and they've got a big hill to climb up. 
And so what they're going to use is they're going to use the sun's energy. Because if we look over here, how much energy are we starting with? We're starting with 500 joules like before. And when we add that sun's energy, we can get all the way up to this hill and go over the edge. This is our activation energy. And we make these new products of glucose and oxygen gas. Now those new products, if I extrapolate this line over here, we see it's about 800 joules. So even though my bank account went higher than that, and now it came down low, I'm really looking at what happened at the beginning and at the end. And I see that I was at 500, now I'm at 800. This is endothermic. It is gained energy overall. The enthalpy, what happened to the heat? Well, if I was at 500, now I'm at 300. Guess what? My delta H, my enthalpy, is a positive 300 joules. And in this situation, we talk about the entropy, the Messer disorder. Well, we've got a situation where this is negative. This is not preferred by nature. This was a gas and a liquid or a gas and a gas. And now we have them over here as a solid and a gas. This has become more ordered, um, less messy. Um, so this is a situation where we have a negative entropy. And the endothermic, the enthalpy, is a positive because it's gaining energy.